Welcome, grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Rick Blunt of Okemos Community Church, and I'm glad you have tuned in for this message of hope and inspiration. I'm here on a ladder in kind of an unusual, out-of-the-way place here at Okemos Community Church. You'll understand why in a little bit. We're going to talk about ladders and out-of-the-way places. Some of you from OCC might know where this is instantly, and some of you, it might be a part of the building you've never seen before. We'll talk more about that later. Years ago, I used to be a camp counselor and then a dean at uh, senior high camp at Lake Louise in Boyne Falls, Michigan. And one of the highlights of the week at camp was uh, every night when we would gather as the sun went down to uh, sing songs and worship at the fire bowl, there'd be some 100 to 120 kids and 30 or 40 uh, counselors and staff, and uh, we would sing songs and read scripture and uh, hear testimonies and a message, and we would pray uh, for one another. It was a glorious time, and when someone felt like it had come to its end, they would start singing what was our traditional closing song. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. You know that song. Every round goes higher, higher, sinner. Do you love my Jesus? If you love him, why not serve him? That song, that spiritual, has its roots partly in the story of Jacob and the ladder that comes from heaven in the 28th chapter. But it also has its deep roots in the African-American experience of slavery. Times when they weren't allowed to talk while they were working, but they could sing. And Jacob's ladder became a call and response uh, song that was often sung in the fields. And it was a dream and a hope of that day when uh, they would rise up over the current circumstances of slavery. That day when they would be free and could serve the Lord. So Jacob, in the passage we're looking at today, you know, he's a scoundrel. From the very beginning, he was uh, one of a, a pair of twins, but he was the second born. And scripture tells us he was grabbing at his brother's heel as Esau was born, the firstborn son. The firstborn son got special privileges. As they grew older, Esau became the outdoorsman, the, the hunter. Jacob become, became more of the, uh, the man who worked inside. And at one time, Esau came in fat, uh, ravished and famished, starving to death. And his brother Jacob said, well, he would sell him a bowl of porridge for his birthright. And in the moment Esau was so hungry, he said, sure. And Jacob, Jacob got the birthright of the firstborn. And just before the passage we're looking at uh, today, uh, Jacob, with his uh, mother Rebekah's help, has uh, stolen the blessing of the father. Jacob's father was now old and his eyesight was fading. And so Jacob went into him when he couldn't see who it was and asked for his blessing, the equivalent of his promise of inheritance. Jacob even put fur on his arm in case his father touched his forearm. He would think it was Esau. That had all happened and now his mother has sent him off before he gets in trouble, before Esau finds out and there is uh, danger. And so 
Jacob is running, running for his very life. He's, he's trying to climb the ladder of success. The sun sets and he finds himself in the middle of nowhere, all alone, has nothing. He finds a stone that he kind of sets up to serve as his pillow and he lays down and he has this dream and in this dream there is this ladder and it comes from heaven to earth and angels are descending and ascending on this ladder. Rabbi Harold Kushner on this passage uh, says that uh, the ladder shows the difference between who we are and who God intends us to be. But notice, friends, this isn't Jacob's ladder. He doesn't build or carry this ladder. This is God's ladder. And Jacob doesn't even climb it. Jacob's ladder is the one of his own building is a ladder of greed. It's a, a trying to grab whatever you can grab no matter the cost. He would grab his brother's heel at birth. He would steal his brother's birthright. He would trick his father into giving him the blessing of inheritance. Success at all costs. Getting more than everyone else, trying to be better to, than the next guy, and doing whatever it takes, no matter who it hurts, trickery, or taking advantage of someone, okay. Lying, fine if it gets the job done. Cheating, everybody cheats, don't they? Do you see how Jacob's ladder is, is self-centered? It's self-constructed so that he and he alone has the advantage. There's no sense of community or responsibility to one another. That ladder is still present in our world today, isn't it? There are so many of us who find ourselves caught up in that ladder of trying to do more and achieve more, who think that our worth is, is determined by how much we have or how much better we are than someone else. Jacob's is a ladder of greed and it's a ladder of competition. It's a ladder of winners and losers. A ladder where you strive to be number one at all costs. It also becomes a ladder of isolation. When you've offended too many or hurt too many along the road. Jacob is on the run and he is alone. He is isolated from his family and his friends. He has probably burned too many bridges to ever go back home. You see why they call him the prodigal son of the Old Testament. He's in the middle of nowhere with a stone for a pillow, he is literally between a rock and a hard place. Jacob's ladder is leading nowhere. The second verse of Nearer My God to Thee goes this way. Though like a wanderer the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest a stone, yet in my dreams I'll be nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer to Thee. Jacob is alone and lonely, lost. Where is he going? And in his dream, God comes to him. Note that, friends. This is important in this story. Jacob doesn't pull it all together first. 
There is no repentance at this point in the story. He doesn't admit that he's at fault. He shows no remorse, no guilt, no shame. There is no confession. But still, God comes to him. The scripture says the Lord came and stood beside him. Do you hear the good news in that? We don't have to pull it all together. God comes to us before we even know that we need to confess our sins or that we've done something wrong. God builds the ladder to meet us where we are. God bridges the gap. God comes looking for the lost and the lonely. And this truth about God is told over and over and over and over again in Scripture from Old Testament to New Testament. And it comes to its greatest revelation in Jesus Christ where God's self comes and meets us in the midst of our messiness. And when in Jacob's dream he discovers God's ladder with the angels ascending and descending, it brings God's presence to the messiness of his life. Jacob shifts at that point from achieving to receiving. I'm indebted to Reverend J. Howard Olds for much of the insights of this message. And he says that at this point, uh, Jacob uh, abandons his ladder and accepts God's ladder. It's as if God says, Jacob, what are you grabbing? You already have. Why are you grabbing for what is already yours? Hear the story as it comes to us from the 28th chapter of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth, the top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome! How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God and the gateway of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had had under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on it. He called the place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, 
and of all that you give me, I will surely give one-tenth to you. Nearer my God goes on to say there, let the way appear steps unto heaven. All that thou sendest me in mercy given, angels to beckon me, nearer my God to thee. Are you tired? Tired of climbing some self-constructed ladder of things you think you must do, of trying to get good enough so that God will love you, to do the right thing so you can get into heaven, to have more pluses than minuses on your heavenly account. Have you chosen the wrong ladder in life? You can stop today. Remember, remember what Jacob learned. All that I have needed, God has provided. We hear it in another hymn, don't we? All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Jacob ran, and he ran into God's ladder. And it moved him from struggling to achieve to opening him to receive. It also took him to uh, a place of God's presence rather than a world based on power. Surely, The presence of the Lord is in this place, he says. This is God's house, the gateway of heaven, and I did not know it. God came to Jacob that night. God came to him with compassion. I am with you. You aren't alone. God came to him with protection. I will watch over you. God came to him with guidance. I will bring you back. And God came to him with companionship. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That night, Jacob was changed. Changed from... Achieving to receiving, changed from a world of power to a world of presence, changed from a life of grabbing and getting to a life of giving. Then with my waking thoughts, bright with thy praise, Out of my stony grief, Bethel I'll praise. So by my woes to be, nearer my God to thee, nearer my God to thee, nearer to thee. Some years later, you flip ahead a few chapters, Jacob is leaving his father-in-law's home with two wives, and he's heading to his homeland. And he's a little fearful of encountering his brother Esau. And the night before he's to cross over, an angel came. An angel came and met him in the night, And they wrestled all night long until the angel got the best of him. But Jacob won't let go of the angel until the angel blesses him. And the angel does. And the angel changes his name from Jacob, the supplanter, the trickster, the cheater, the the grabber, the hustler, to Israel. Prince of God, it means. 
he named that place Peniel, which means face to face with God. That story is told in another hymn, Come, O Thou Traveler Unknown. It'll be in the links below today. And Jacob, who's now Israel, falls into the great line of patriarchs from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and his son Joseph and eventually to David and King Solomon and then ultimately to Jesus Christ. Jacob was changed. And when he, he was changed when he became of God, aware of God's presence with him, around him. It was God's presence that changed him, not his change that attracted God's presence. He thought that God's presence were in those places, in Bethel where he erected the stone pillar, in Peniel where he wrestled with God all night. But we now know through the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ that God's presence isn't in a place, it's in God's people. And God is with us always. We hear it even in the words of Jesus, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Can we remember that? Can we remember that in days like this? that are difficult and we wonder where God is and the world seems to be falling apart and people are making poor choices all around us, can we remember God is with us always? And God is building ladders and bridges so that we can move from who we are to who God intends us to be. God comes and meets us in the midst of the messiness of life not waiting for us to pull it all together and get everything figured out. God comes to us before that. And God blesses us. God blesses us with gifts, with the gift of life, with the gift of beauty, with air and flowers and water and sunshine, with seasons and friends and families and food and clothes. All gifted to us given freely to us. Now we might earn a living along the way, but we receive the gift of life from God Almighty. So quit grabbing for that which God has already provided you. Stop trying to climb to the top of some imagined ladder you've created. Receive the blessings, the blessings of God's ladder where angels ascend and descend to bring you blessings, the ladder that brings God to stand beside you, bridging the gap between who you are and who God calls you to be. Wherever this day finds you, my friends, know this. God is with you right now, today. Warts and all, all of your mistakes and past histories that you'd rather forget with your brokenness, with your loneliness, with your hurts and heartaches. So pause and be in God's presence. You are in God's presence. Do you know it? Be still. Quit grabbing. And open your hearts and hands to receive so that you can become all that God intends, so that you can be a blessing to those around you and generations that will follow. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear 
the brush of angel wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Pray with me. O oh God, help us to sense and know your presence beside us. Help us to hear your promise to always be with us, to protect us and guide us. O oh God, help us to trust in your goodness so that we might be good like you, that we might reflect your love, your mercy. Help us to be who you intend us to be, that we might be a blessing to the world. We ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, I invite you to hit the like or uh, make a comment or do both. Maybe you'll share this on your Facebook uh, news uh, feed or um, you'll send an email with the YouTube link so that someone else uh, might be blessed by this word from God. Uh, know that OCC continues to be active even when we aren't meeting in person. We are in ministry while, excuse me, while the church is scattered around the community. I invite you to go to our webpage, okamisocc.org. There you'll find our calendar, a list of activities, and a, a bunch of information about the church and our ongoing ministries, including the food pantry uh, for those in the Okemos zip code. I invite you to like and follow our Facebook page where we post uh, frequently. You can call or email the office to get on our email list, and then you will get uh, an email with the Sunday uh, video message, an email with the Monday uh, message from me, the pastor. Uh, you will get uh, a Friday uh, email with a newsletter. You'll get a Thursday uh, video link to the midweek devotion. Um, and so it's a way to stay connected. Uh, following uh, uh, worship this morning, if you're watching on Sunday morning, we're going to have a Zoom fellowship time at 1130. We'd love to have you join us for an informal time of chat. You will find the link to that Zoom both in last week's Friday email newsletter and in Monday's uh, emailed uh, Monday message from me. If you can't find either of those places, if you post on uh, Facebook, I will uh, send you a private message uh, by 11.15 uh, Sunday morning with that link as well. This week, uh, remember, we have pastor in the parking lot. Actually, it's pastor at the picnic table. We're sitting in the shade. Uh, bring a lawn chair and your face mask and uh, something to drink, especially because it's supposed to be warm this week informal time to visit and see friends. Check out the music post on uh, Wednesday evening and the midweek video devotion on Thursday. And then on Friday, uh, you will have the email newsletter. On Thursday afternoon, we have a coffee with Pastor Rick at two o'clock. Again, you find the email uh, Zoom links in both the email and the Monday uh, message, and we hope you will uh, join us. We have a prayer list that we publish uh, weekly. If you have a prayer request or a joy, uh, call or email the office with that. If you'd like to be on the list to receive those lists of prayer requests and joys, uh, let the office know and we can add you as well. I hope that this week you will, like Jacob, discover God's presence in your life wherever you are, in the midst of your messiness, in the midst of your real life life, know that God is with you. Grace and peace, friends.